And Trump talks about not being able to get rid of these people. And Justice Scalia did it the same way when, when they were looking at the global warming issue. And he said, I have to uh, rule under administrative law, and, and therefore there's nothing I can do about it. And so what these bureaucrats did was they brought in this whole third branch of, of law, which pro totally protects them. This is, as I said, try and get rid of a bureaucrat. They, uh, it, it, Trump and the, and the gang talk about it all the time, about how, how impossible it is. And, and so what you've got is the first thing they do is they put, they get into power, they expand their power, they put walls around themselves, and then they, cre they, they then create their own agenda. And, and if, none of it's got anything to do with what the public need or want. Um, in fact, if, if I was good to take over a government, the first thing I do is get rid of about 90% of the bureaucrats. That, the, the bureaucrats have become the problem in today's world. That's the, that's the deep state, the unaccountable, uh, uh, self-sustaining uh, deep state. And of course, the, the, uh, the fake news that they're, they're created and perpetuating is the global warming, the global warming issue and the environmental issues. So let's talk, Tim. Let's talk about as we close up now. Let's let's talk about some uh, some of the facts and some of your opinions. I'd like to to know your thoughts on the the climate cycles that we're currently living. Um, it's my opinion that we're entering uh, a period of quiet sun that will last probably through 2040, where the next three solar cycles will be weaker. Uh, we've reached the new cosmic ray maximum. And with the work of Svensmark and the cloud experiment at CERN, we know that that will cause more cloud nucleation worldwide, larger hail, increased lightning. And we, we've, begin, we've begun to see an uptick in this worldwide, especially flooding. The 100 and 500 year floods are becoming more common. And this should increase through the next three decades. And, and at the same time, I don't know if you're aware of the waning magnetosphere and the fact that uh, we are currently experiencing a magnetic excursion and the magnetic field of the planet is actually weakening exponentially. Um, what are your thoughts on that and the, the future of humanity with this the globalist agenda to perpetuate global warming and, per, and the potential threat of uh, climate catastrophes in the coming decades due to the exact opposite, a global cooling event. Well, this is a, the uh, with, with, when you when politics gets involved in science and uh, science is going to lose uh, all of science is going to lose from this because as the public start to see all of these predictions of doom and gloom and threat uh, fail, uh, so the, you can define science in one word, prediction. If you can't predict, you don't have science. And of course, that's what the question I've always asked about uh, weather and climate. How accurate are your predictions? Therefore, you don't have a science. And and so my my concern, as I said, is, is that all of these uh, issues uh, will get ignored as the public uh, become increasingly cynical about about climate and the environment. Now, um, the the other side of this is for people to realize what I was talking about earlier about uh, how society goes from a paradigm shifts. Environmentalism was chosen as a political vehicle, and I've I've given you the quote about Murray Strong, but I've also mentioned the fact that Hitler was the first to use the environment for a political agenda. And he, he, he very deliberately did so. And um, uh, of course, uh, he very quickly abandoned the idea once he got all the power that he wanted, but he was the first one to, to make use of it. And what uh, environmentalism, and it's hard for people to understand this, but it sounds like well, it 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 has a it has a fundamental truth to it, and the fundamental truth is we should look after our, our, our planet. It doesn't make sense to soil our own nest, but that doesn't uh, that that's a basic truth. But that doesn't encompass environmentalism. 
And when you start to look at all of the things that, um, and I mentioned earlier about uh, Paul Ehrlich, 180 things that he predicted, not one of them have come correct. The, you mentioned the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. That this, this was so deliberately politicized that when Maurice Strong set up the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, he limited what they could do. Now, the world thinks that the IPCC, as it is, is looking at all of climate change. It isn't. It's only looking at human causes of climate change, because that's the definition that they were given uh, it, by the United Nations Framework Convention on, on Climate Change in 1977. And, and so uh, it, it's... Um, let me give you a specific example of this. One of the things that I use. Tim, you were going to give us a specific example and then you cut out. And I, I would really like to talk more about the environmental movement and how it's become actually a, yep. a fraud. So go ahead. Well, it's. It started out as a fraud because, of course, it, it claimed to care about the environment. But in fact, what it was doing was, uh, it, it, what, what's the uh, original chicken little? The sky is falling. So, so the environment uh, was the, the original and classic, the, the sky is falling to control people. And, and um, as I said earlier, um, it, it, these people were able to say, look, your, your own government can't protect you. You need a world government to do it. And, and, and so that, that's how, how that, that came about. But the environment um, was, was a, a paradigm shift that started in, on April 22nd of 1972 that's um, uh, the uh, original Earth Day and it was Le Lenin's birthday and that date was deliberately chosen by Paul Ehrlich and Paul Ehrlich who is still at Stanford University has created all of this he's the guy behind the Club of Rome and he's the guy behind all the overpopulation and all of the the nonsense that you're hearing and none of it bears any investigation. There's no evidence to support any of the threats that they talk about, about sea level rise, about desertification, about deforestation, um, and on and on and on, about melting of the permafrost and so on. Now, are these things occurring? Yes, but none of them at any abnormal rate. In fact, all of the changes that are occurring on, uh, on the globe right now are well within uh, natural uh, limits and boundaries. But the, the and we, uh, just to give you an example, you, we, we started in, uh, on this with the Greenland ice sheet, right? Where they say, oh, there's 10 billion tons of ice melted in a single day on the Greenland ice sheet. Well, that's not abnormal. You, you can have last winter. I love it. it. Last winter, last last winter, you had 11 billion tons of ice formed in one day, but nobody talked about that. And one of the things that people don't understand, and just to give you the larger example, we're using um, uh, the ice caps. Glaciers are formed by snow that survives the summer, and then. As the layers of snow accumulate, they build up. Once they get to about 50 meters of depth or 150 feet, they start to compress with weight and the lower layers form into ice. That's how a glacier is formed. And you've got uh, two basic types of glaciers. You've got the continental glaciers like Antarctica or Greenland. And then you've got the uh, alpine glaciers like you've got in the Rocky Mountains and the Columbia Ice Field. Oh. Now, notice what I've said there. Nobody talks about the change in the, in the glacier p being related to differences in snowfall. Everybody says, oh, no, the glacier is melting because of, of global temperatures. Most of the change in, in glaciers is due to changing snowfall, not temperatures. The temperatures got to change a, a great deal. And one of the ways we know this is when we do ice cores uh, to uh, 
to determine the pattern of temperature in the past and also the pattern of CO2, um, they use that as, as uh, it, it relating to, to temperature, but it isn't, it's precipitation. And, and that's the really important thing in, in what you're seeing with a glacier. And so, and, and second thing is that the, the continental glaciers, Greenland and Antarctica, most of the ice is already below sea level. Less than a quarter of the ice is above sea level. So even if those glaciers were to melt completely, the the rate the uh, increase in sea level would be hardly measurable. Now, why do they say, "Oh, well, you see reports, oh well, you know, if Antarctica melts, there'll be twenty foot sea rise." Well, the reason they, they the way they do that is they say, "Well, how much water is in Greenland and Antarctica?" Well, if we melt that ice, and there's the amount of water we've got, and we add that water to the current sea level then that would raise sea level by whatever it is, 20 feet, 80 feet, whatever numbers you want to throw out there. But they forget, as I said, that three quarters of that ice is already below sea level. And not only that, but the uh, weight of the ice around the world pushing down on the crust of the earth depresses the crust of the earth and pushes the con the, the um, crust of the earth down. So when you melt the, the glaciers away, the land rises up and therefore uh, it changes the capacity of the oceans to hold that water. So, uh, I mean, it, it's just unbelievable the lies that they're telling uh, about, <laughs> Tim, about glaciation. Tim, and, and Tim it, not only that, yeah. the amount of remaining ice on the globe is so insignificant. If we melt it all and put it into the oceans, people don't realize the volume of the yeah. oceans are so great that the oceans will not rise until thermal expansion occurs, which is delayed by hundreds of years. It's a thermodynamic yeah. principle. You yeah. could fill the ocean with all of the melted ice and it would barely rise just tens of feet until thermal expansion allows it to rise completely hundred years later. And, and this environmentalist fraud, I, I can't believe billions of people are duped. CO2 is plant food. It's, it's only 4% of greenhouse gas. And not only that uh, we continue to reduce actual regulations on pollutants we have the the largest red tides and and uh, algal blooms ever seen worldwide because of uh, agricultural runoff the food we eat is food for sheep it's all covered in glyphosate and other residues from the agricultural and uh, big ag industry and, and chemicals Dow pharmaceutical basically runs the US government um, and this is all connected to the globalist agenda.